This lens doesn't glow. It doesn't move. And yet, it holds the power to nearly double, or even triple, the energy we pull from the sun. On rooftops, in deserts, even in space. But you've probably never seen it. Because while some technologies rise quietly, others disappear before they're understood. Behind this piece of plastic is a story of heat, light, forgotten inventions, and missed potential. Why haven't we embraced the lens? Why does something so effective remain so overlooked? It's not about science fiction. It's about something we already have, and maybe something we've already ignored. The uneven sun. Not all sunlight is created equal. Just look at a global solar map and you'll see it. Bands of intense radiation around the equator, patches of weaker light across northern Europe and parts of Canada. The sun may shine on everyone, but not with the same strength. This unevenness creates a challenge for solar energy. Panels in Arizona might hum with energy, while the same ones in England barely wake up. But even in the sunniest regions, there's a bigger problem. Most solar panels only convert a small slice of that light into electricity. The Earth receives more energy from the sun in one hour than humanity uses in an entire year. But we're only capturing a fraction of that. Every day, photons land on rooftops, deserts, and fields, only to be wasted by inefficient cells and outdated designs. So the question isn't just how to spread solar wider, it's how to make what we already get go further. And that's where lenses come in. Instead of chasing more light, what if we could squeeze more energy out of the light we already have? That idea isn't just wishful thinking. It's the foundation of something quietly revolutionary and surprisingly simple. The simple genius of the lens. At first glance, the Fresnel lens doesn't look like much. It's flat, lightweight, feels like cheap plastic. But inside that humble sheet is something brilliant. Invented by French physicist Augustin Jean Fresnel in the early 1800s, it was originally used in lighthouses to bend and concentrate light so ships could see it from miles away. Rather than being a big curved piece of glass, the Fresnel lens flattens that curve into thin concentric rings, each one angled just right to focus sunlight onto a single point. It's not just lighter than a traditional lens, it's cheaper, easier to produce, easier to install. And it turns out, it's good at taking diffuse sunlight and giving it direction, force, and purpose. Even a small piece of this lens can take a broad beam and concentrate it with surprising accuracy. Today, you'll find Fresnel lenses in everything from VR headsets to photography equipment. But one of its most overlooked talents lies in solar energy. Focused light means concentrated power, which means more electricity if the panel underneath can handle it. So why aren't we all just slapping Fresnel lenses onto our solar panels? Because what seems simple on the surface hides a deeper heat, proving it works. Let's start with the basics. Take a small solar panel and a multimeter. In open sun, you might get 5 volts and 15 milliamperes. That's about 75 milliwatts of power. Now, place a Fresnel lens between the sun and the panel. Instantly, the numbers change. Voltage jumps. Current increases. You're now pushing close to 140 milliwatts, nearly double the output. Nothing magical. No software. Just a plastic sheet and sunlight. Focused. It's easy to get excited by these numbers. After all, if we could scale this up, we'd solve solar's efficiency problem overnight, right? But here's the twist. The boost in energy also brings something else. Heat. A lot of it. Because when you focus sunlight, you're not just increasing the brightness. You're concentrating on the infrared. And that can cook your solar panel alive if you're not careful. 
To understand this effect, try placing your hand near the focal point. It feels like a heat lamp. Now imagine that intensity on sensitive electronics for hours. What started as a promising experiment quickly became a balancing act between power gain and heat damage. So yes, the lens works. But it opens a second problem that's just as urgent as the first. Heat, the hidden enemy. You might remember this from childhood, using a magnifying glass to melt plastic toys or burn dry leaves. That's solar concentration in its rawest form. Now imagine doing that to an expensive piece of electronics. Solar panels aren't built to handle that kind of thermal stress. As the temperature climbs, efficiency drops. Too much heat for too long, and the panel can degrade or fail. To fight this, engineers have tried everything. Heat sinks, like the ones in your computer, absorb and dissipate some of the heat. They're cheap and passive, but only work well with good airflow. Liquid cooling, similar to what's used in high-performance computers, can draw heat away more aggressively. In some cases, the heat is even reused to warm homes or heat water. But both of these add cost, add weight, add complexity. What starts as a simple idea, concentrating light for more power, quickly becomes a thermal engineering problem. And in the world of affordable renewable energy, complexity often loses. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Beauty, not brains. You might have seen it online. A glowing glass orb balanced above a tiny solar cell. Sculptural, futuristic. It's called Beta Eye and it captured the imagination of thousands when it launched on Indiegogo. It looked like a solution. It raised over $200,000. And then, silence. Despite its sleek design, the system had issues. That large, heavy glass sphere lacked proper cooling. The tiny solar cell beneath it wasn't optimized for concentrated light, and there was no serious tracking system to follow the sun. It looked like the future, but it acted like a prototype. A smaller version was made for desks, part gadget, part conversation piece. But it too faced the same limitations. The problem wasn't just technical, it was conceptual. Beta I tried to turn science into sculpture, but energy systems don't care about aesthetics. They care about efficiency, stability, and longevity. And those needs weren't met. Still, the attention Beta I received showed one thing clearly. People want this to work. They just need something better. The tracking problem. The sun doesn't sit still. From sunrise to sunset, it moves across the sky. Slowly. Predictably. But constantly. And for a lens-based solar system, that movement is everything. Without adjustment, the focal point drifts off the panel, wasting all that concentrated light. So, you need a solar tracker, something that tilts or rotates the system to follow the sun. There are many types, single axis, dual axis, motorized, and passive, but they all come with costs. Mechanical parts wear down, electronics fail, more weight, more maintenance. That's why researchers started looking at alternatives like the graded index lens. Instead of needing to move, its curved internal structure bends incoming light from different angles into the same central point. It sounds perfect, but these lenses are big, expensive, harder to manufacture. In many ways, Solar tracking remains the Achilles heel of concentrated photovoltaics. It's essential, but it's also the thing that prevents them from being plug and play. To fix the sun, we first have to follow it. The breakthrough, multi-junction magic. So how do you justify all this complexity? With results. 
That's what makes Fraunhofer ISC's system so compelling. They're not just using Fresnel lenses and basic solar cells, they're using multi-junction cells, layered materials that absorb different wavelengths of sunlight more effectively. These cells are expensive, but oh. under concentrated sunlight, they shine, literally. Where normal solar panels top out at 15 to 20% efficiency, these multi-junction cells can hit 40, 45%, nearly half the sunlight turned directly into usable power. And because they're so efficient, you don't need as many of them. You shrink the solar surface area, concentrate the light, and suddenly the economics begin to work. Fraunhofer's design also features thin lenses, low-cost trackers, and passive cooling, reducing the barriers that stopped systems like Beta Eye from succeeding. It's still early, but it's working. Sometimes it's not about reinventing everything. It's about aligning the pieces we already have. Still not mainstream? Yet, for all their promise, concentrated photovoltaics remain niche. The reasons are clear. They need clear skies. Cloudy weather ruins everything. They need tracking, cooling, precision. They are more prone to failure than static panels, and installation is more demanding. But despite all this, momentum is building. Researchers are improving the materials. Costs are dropping. Manufacturing is adapting. In certain parts of the world, sunny, dry regions with high solar radiation and land constraints, CPVs might soon outcompete traditional panels. One financial report even projected CPV prices falling below standard PV within the next decade. Of course, that report came from a company developing CPV tech, so grain of salt. Still, there's something here, a potential, a promise, because we're entering an era where efficiency matters more than ever. Space is limited, resources are strained, climate targets are urgent, and technologies that once seemed too fragile might finally find their moment. This lens may never shine in every home, but it's not about replacing all solar. It's about getting more from what we already have. In a world chasing breakthroughs, sometimes the answers are already here, bent into circles, flattened into sheets, waiting on dusty shelves. Maybe this lens isn't the future, but the idea behind it, the search for more with less, that's not going away. Not when energy demand is rising. Not when every watt counts. Maybe it's time we looked closer. Because sometimes the solution isn't bigger. It's sharper, simpler, and already catching the light.